close to the book of Ephesians. Last week we were talking about Saul of Tarsus, how he thought he was doing right. He had a vision of his own making, a purpose, a plan of his own making. And uh, as he was on a way to uh, Damascus and to the, in order to prosecute or persecute the church, he, he had a, a divine encounter, say divine encounter. Uh, now, his was a very, uh, a very powerful divine encounter, um, but not all of us have that kind of divine encounter when we get saved. But it's still an encounter that comes from heaven. Jesus said, unless my father draws you, that you, you can't come. And I, I don't know, we probably don't realize how privileged we truly are that God would speak to us and reveal to us who his son really is, that the father revealed to us his son, Jesus Christ. And we saw that he was the only way to the father, that he was God in the flesh, the Messiah, the promised seed of, of the woman who would crush the head of the serpent, uh, the seed of uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the, 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 the seed of David. And he came to redeem us and we saw that. Now, there's a difference between having that in your head because many people, they attend uh, churches. I, I went to church uh, all the way up until I joined the Navy. But I, I, and I made confessions of faith, but it was never real to me. Um, I wasn't truly what they say, born again. But the day came when I saw Jesus. I saw him. No, I didn't see him all of, in, in all of his splendor and all of his glory and all of his power and all of his might. It says, now we see Jesus, and yet we do not see all things put under his feet. It's a progressive revelation. It's like you got the seed of a, of a mighty redwood tree or a mighty oak tree, and, and, and you plant it. And sometimes our life in the spirit is like that tree. It, it, it begins to spring forth, but it, it doesn't mature overnight. You don't plant your, it's not like Jack and a beanstalk where you throw the magic beans in the ground and you come out the next day and it's sprung all the way up into the heavens. It's not just like that. It's, and, and some people, uh, they grow slower than other people spiritually. And, and yet that doesn't mean that God can't use them because, you, you, you know, you, we, we think about some men who were mightily used of God. It wasn't into the later years of their life when all of a sudden uh, they, they, they took a hold of the truth. Uh, whenever there's a, a mighty move of the Holy Ghost, uh, it, it seems like people take a hold of the truth. And this is what we're believing for. We're believing for, a, you know, this coming Sunday, we're uh, celebrating what they call Pentecost Sunday. And uh, when the Holy Ghost came, like a, like a sound of a rushing mighty wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So we want to talk about what happened to Saul a little bit tonight, how it affects you and I. But Saul became a Paul. Now, when, when Paul saw Jesus, uh, he, he, he got born again, and he was born of the incorruptible seed of the word of life. And then he got filled with the Holy Ghost when Ananias came to him. And it says the scales fell off of his eyes, and his eyes were opened. When he first saw Jesus, it was like, thank you, he was completely blind. And he became blind to the world that he lived in. Now, it was kind of reverse of what happened to Adam and Eve. When they partook of the fruit of the tree, their knowledge of good and evil, they became blind. But they became blind to the realm of the spirit. They became blind to who God is and what God's plan was and what God wanted to do. And, and, but when, when Saul saw Jesus, uh, he became blind to the natural world. And God began to speak to his heart. And he began to reveal to Paul the revelation of the gospel. And really Paul talks about that quite a bit in the book of Galatians. He says, the gospel I'm preaching, I didn't receive the man, for I neither received it of man, neither did I was it taught of of man, but by Christ Jesus himself. He had a personal encounter with Christ that coincided with what Christ declared and what the prophets said. See, if you got a revelation that does not agree with the book, then you, you, you're listening to a, a lying spirit. Because God never disagrees. You, you think about this. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. Now, we know they are still three distinct people, you might say. Yes, the Holy Ghost is a person. And it always refers to him as a him. So you got the Father, the Son. There's three in heaven that bear witness. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. These three are one. And it, it, it's hard for us to imagine. But 
throughout eternity, be, before eternity ever began, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit existed, and they always have and they always will agree with one another 100%. 100%. Never disagree. They never will have a thought contrary to one another. And that's what Jesus said when he came. He came to reveal the Father. This is why, and, and, and you know, I, I, I went through Bible school and I've read hundreds of books and uh, eventually got my associates and my bachelor's and my master's and my Ph.D. And I even uh, got a doctorate of divinity. And all those years of study and all those years of research and sitting and listening dynamic preachers, I, I never heard none of them. And it's not a deep revelation, but it is a deep revelation because we're going to talk about deep mysteries tonight but the deep revelation is this that the reason why God how many know God knows what he's doing come on come on how many know we don't know what we're doing he's our wisdom okay but the reason why God laid out the New Testament he knew that they would do it the way it is and, and first of all the four gospels and, and and then it goes into Romans and Corinthians and Galatians and but that was not by accident it was God orchestrating it because the four Gospels lay such a foundation and even the parables. I wrote a book back there about the 50 parables, the teachings and the mysteries of the kingdom that have been hid from the foundation of the world. The reason why he gave us these books in this order was to lay a foundation for the enemy could not bring in confusion and misunderstanding who God really is. You'll find out through the ages, the, the, the way the devil was able to come in and mess people up was they didn't really know who God was. They really didn't know who God was. You know, just because a child is born of its parents, that child doesn't, doesn't mean that child knows his parents. Like the prodigal son. If the prodigal son would have really known his daddy, he would have never left his daddy. And, and, you, you, and, and the truth of the matter is that Adam and his wife, they would walk with God and they would communicate with God, but they didn't really know God to a great extent. Now, don't misunderstand me. They were alive under God. But when they listened to the devil, see, God created us for one main reason. And he, he created us to be in his image and his likeness. And Pastor Pete and I, we harp on this all the time. And, and it makes a, a, a beautiful music with that harp. We are bound. Why? Because that is the ultimate purpose of, of the conclusion. So Jesus came in order to give us what we need to be just like him. Think about this. Just like him in his nature, his character, his attitude, his thoughts, his words. You know, they said uh, 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 people uh, uh, gather together. They flock together who are the same. Right? Uh, you, you know, you think about, uh, and I don't know if you've ever been, and I've never had the privilege to really go to a place where they had an orchestra and they were playing and, and they were on the same page of music and the drums and, and, and the guitars and the flutes and all of the instruments that were involved in it. But they're all playing off of the same sheet of music. And so it all comes in together into a beautiful harmony, a beautiful song, a, 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 a beautiful symphon symphony, right? Well, that's where God wants us as his people and actually we saw this happen in the book of Acts we saw the body of Christ come into harmony come into unity come into oneness with the will of the father and the will of the son and the next thing you know God is showing up I'm telling you I know that I know there is so much more that God wants me to experience that of him that I have not yet experienced and I know the only reason I have not experienced more than what I have to this point. Now, I'm not talking about getting born again and getting baptized on the Holy Ghost. I'm saying there is so much more that God wants me to experience. And the reason why I haven't experienced more is because uh, I, I've not been consistent in what I believe with him. Now, I might even know what's truth in here, but not living it here. And the more I come into harmony, the more I come into agreement, the more I come into oneness with God, the more that God can pour his spirit through me. You know, the Bible says it is written that 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 out of our belly, he that believes on the son out of his belly, out of his belly, her belly will flow rivers, 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 say rivers of living water. 
uh, Sunday night, me and Pastor Gary, Lord willing, will be tag teaming. I'm going to preach on the fact that when the Holy Ghost comes, he wants to fill you with joy. <laughs> Did you know that? The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy where? In the Holy Ghost. God wants you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. But people will resist that. You know, a whole different message, but, you know, Stephen said, you are those who always resist the Holy Ghost. Now, who in their right mind would resist the joy of the Lord? But because we've been taught wrong, because we've been instructed wrong, because it don't make sense to our carnal mind. See, the natural mind cannot understand the things of God because the spirit is spiritually discerned. And throughout eternity, uh, your body right now could not receive the fullness of joy. It, you would die it, it, you, because it would be so overwhelming. So God is going to give you a body that can handle joy throughout eternity. <laughs> I mean, so much joy, and you'll have a body that will be able to control the laughter. You know, sometimes when the joy of the Lord hits us, we just can't control ourselves, can we? It just overwhelms us, and we might shake or shout or run or dance or fall down or can't move because our bodies can't handle That's the glory of the Lord. We can't handle it. But it, when we get our glorified body, we, we will have bodies that can handle all of the glory and all of the joy and all of the presence of God. But Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost made us in order to be in oneness with him and we will, throughout eternity, be exactly like him. And, and the more we become like him in this world, the more he can move through us, the more he can speak through us, the more he can touch through us, the more he can heal through us. See, Jesus was 100% in harmony with the Father in all of his life, in every, even in his mother's womb. He was. He never got out of harmony with the Father. Uh, now, how, how, how many people, you know, do, 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 how, how many times a day is Mike Yeager in complete harmony with God? In my thoughts, in my words, in my deeds, in my actions? A am I really in harmony with the Father? Well, the amazing thing is that God gave us his word in order to speed up the process. Because really, without the truth, we wouldn't really know who we are, what we have, what we can do. And, and God so desires, I'm telling you this, I, 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 and I'm going to use the word feel it. I just so feel it deep down in my heart that God, he, he's just like uh, sitting on the edge of his seat. And, and, and he wants us to, to become one with him in, in our emotions. Yes, in our emotions, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, in, in our desires, in our purpose. And, and then, then the enemy comes along, and you need to understand what the enemy comes to do. See, the enemy comes along in order to strip away from us our oneness with God. And you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to make us one with him. That's, that's what the works of the flesh are. The, when the works of the flesh are manifested, and it tells us the fruits of the spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. And, and I'm sorry to say that when I just spit these realities out, they just seem to maybe go, go in one ear and not another. Because every one of these realities is, is, is life-changing, mind-boggling, I mean just transforming. See, the word of God is given to transform us and change us into his likeness and his image. It says the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of, 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 of God, who, who is the image of Jesus Christ, should shine onto them. See, this, this amazing transformation from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. See, it's the Spirit of the Lord that transforms us. And, and the devil, he, he wants to rob Mike Yeager from the reality of this oneness with God uh, by the means of his spirit and his truth. Oneness with God by means of his spirit and his truth, because then I, I, I will not be a threat to his power. I'll not be a threat to his domain. I'll, be, I'll not be a threat to setting the captives free that the enemy has taken at his own will. So, so the, the devil wants, and really, people don't understand this. The Bible says hell was made for the devil and his angels. 
And, and, and listen, the only, and I'm going to explain myself, the only people in hell are the devil and his angels. Well, wait a minute. There's a bunch of human beings there. The minute that a person dies, and we'll see this, that if I die in Christ, loving Christ, if I die loving Christ, that's my purpose. Lord, I'm here for you. And he takes my breath instantly. I mean, the, the second I breathe my last breath on this side of heaven and my soul and my spirit steps out of this physical body, I'll see him as he is and I will be 100% just like him. 100%. I'll know him even as I'm known. That's what the Bible says. When I see him, I'll know him even as I am known. Is there anything that God doesn't know about you? Now, now see, we, I know you say, well, I heard so-and-so went to heaven, and in heaven there's Bible, there's colleges, and there's education, and well, you want to believe that, you go right ahead. I don't believe it. I choose to believe the Bible. I don't care who it is that had that experience of going to heaven. I believe the Bible. And the Bible says the moment that we see him, we will be just like him. No more, no more you'll not, no longer will there be anything hidden from you about the reality of who God is. And uh, if we had that fullness of revelation in this life, we, 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 we would... We would Matter of fact, Enoch had a little bit of that revelation, and God took him to heaven. <laughs> Paul had revelation after revelation after. That's what revelation is. Revelation is when, you, when you're seeing God. And, and, and it's through the eyes of your understanding. It's through the eyes of your heart. You're seeing God for who he is. I'm telling you, as I listen to a lot of the teaching and the preaching, and I've picked up books through the years, and, 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 and I look and I, I read these books and I listen to these sermons, and I'm saying, I, what God are they talking about? That, that's not the God. That, Jesus never said that. Jesus never taught that. Jesus never declared that. And there's times I've, I've swallowed wrong teachings. But as I studied the word of God, God would be, and I could give you illustration after illustration. But for instance, I was taught many years ago that you could tell angels what to do. And one day the father corrected me many, many years ago. He said, what do you think you're doing? I, well, I'm telling the angels, uh, get, on, get in the front of my car, get behind my car, uh, get below me, get me above me every time I go somewhere. He said, son, he said, please, and, and this is what the father said to me. He said, please tell me and show me any time where my son Jesus ever told an angel what to do. Well, I searched the scriptures. I couldn't find Jesus telling. But Jesus said, if I would ask of the Father, he would send the angels. He said, if I asked of the Father. For in other words, Jesus never told an angel ever what to do. But we've been being taught, well, does it really matter that much, Pastor Mike? Yeah, because now our focus is on angels and not on the Father. <laughs> and he says not only that, but he says, he gives his angels charge over them to protect them in all their ways for those who love him. So I don't have to talk to angels. Hello? I don't talk to angels. Now, I have had some angels talk to me. And when I've had an angel manifest himself to me, it was always very brisk and very to the point. And the angel said, son of man. And he, he said, and he would tell me the message. And angels do deliver messages. Matter of fact, remember it was an angel of the Lord that came to Joseph and told Joseph. Remember it was an angel of the Lord that came to Mary. Hold another subject. Where do you get all this understanding? From the four gospels. And, and I'm telling what, there's a lot of books written that would have never been written if those people would have just gave themselves to the four gospels. But the devil comes to rob me of the image, the likeness, the character, the personality of God. Let me give you an example. Is God ever depressed? No. Then, then why are we depressed? Is God ever fearful? No. Well, think about this. All of the modern day church around the world is not gathering because they're fearful. And they will tell you they're not fearful. We're not fearful. We're just trying to protect people. Well, isn't that amazing? If you are walking in the revelation of who you are in Christ, would you be concerned about this virus? No. So we need to renew our minds. So Jesus comes in order to 
create within us the image of the Father. The devil comes to strip it out and make us just like him. And when the human being dies, not loving Christ, listen, not loving Christ, when they die, everything that was in them that was good, decent, and holy, it's stripped away from them. Boom. They're total evil forever. I had a close loved one who died. And um, I didn't know if they were really saved. I was so tormented, tormented, tormented. And I'm talking to the father about three days after this death. And I'm um, headed out to Wisconsin to go to the funeral. I'm so t- tormented. I'm staying in Chicago one night with my son, Stephen. It was terrible blizzard outside. And this is what the father said to me. He didn't tell me that my loved one went to heaven. He said this to me. He said, son. I can hear the voice of God. I said, yes, Lord, because I'm tormented. He said, even if that person who you loved did not make it, they're not the person you knew. I said, what do you mean? He said, even as a believer who dies loving me, Everything that was evil in them, everything that was wicked, everything that was perverted, everything that was twisted, every thought, every ideal, every good thing, every evil thing in them, everything that was against my will was stripped out of them the second they died. Boom. He said, the same as on the other side. He said, the minute a person dies who did not die loving me, everything good in them was stripped out of them. And the people... You loved who didn't make it. They're not the people you knew in life. Now to some people that would be tormenting. But you know what? To me it was great liberating. Because we all know people we loved. That we really have our doubts whether they really knew God. And I just want you to know that if they didn't make it. They're not the people you knew in this life. And that's that's because there's a separating of light and darkness isn't there? He commanded the light to shine out of darkness and he shined in our hearts the light of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And so throughout eternity we'll be just, but here Saul is, he sees Jesus and all of a sudden he has this divine download of revelation. And he actually, he he went aside, they think, for about three years it implies in in the book of Galatians and he got alone with God for three years. Saul disappeared. He became a Paul. And three years later, he comes back and he is, he is a spiritual giant. You know why? Because he spent those years in the presence of God. And all of that knowledge he had, all that head knowledge he had, because he was a very intelligent man, and now it's become alive. Now it's no longer led to him, but it's spirit. And he begins to say some astounding things in Ephesians. And he begins with the reality of his calling. And he knows who he is now. He doesn't have to convince anybody. He's not trying to be somebody. He knows who he is. And and he's he's comfortable in that. How how many know what I mean? Do you have an old pair of shoes you're comfortable in? And you don't want to throw them away. They're just, they're they're comfortable to you. I got these little Murph shoes. They're, they're, I don't know where I got them from. They're, they're blue with cotton interior. And I, and when I go home, anytime I go to my office, I kick off my big old boots and I put on my Murph shoes. I, I don't know what they're called, if they're called Murph shoes. What are they called, Stephanie? Yes. And I, and yes, that's what, and I put them on and I'm comfortable in them. And Paul, yeah, there they are. And Paul is comfortable in, in who he is in Christ. And he's not in competition with anybody. He's not trying to be somebody. He knew, he knows who he is because he discovered who Jesus is. I'll say again, he knows who he is. You really won't know who you are until you know who Jesus is. You really won't. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints, he calls us saints, the separated, called out ones, which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful. Now, he's going to begin to give descriptions, and I don't really want to spend a lot of time on this tonight, because I'm going to take you to a couple other scriptures. But notice what he's called. Now, he's not, he, 
I want you to know something. When you look in the book of Ephesians, he's not making just a good confession. You know, in, in our modern day church, we make good confessions about people. No, these are, uh, these are truths. You know, it's like in Philippians, he says, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more our absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So he's not just confessing they were obedient. They were always obedient. Grab that. <laughs> always obedient okay he says and to the faithful in Christ Jesus grace be to you that means divine giftings and peace from God our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ listen blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who now he had this revelation who hath blessed us with all blessings in heavenly places how, how do we apprehend that pastor by faith you got to see it. You have already been blessed. You've already been healed. Your needs have already been met. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, this is so far beyond the natural mind. The only way you can understand this is by a renewed mind. An unrenewed mind can repeat this. Just because you quote scriptures doesn't mean your mind has been renewed. What do I mean by mind renewed? Well, it, it's like right now, these lights are being renewed through the electricity that flows through them. But if you would turn off the power, even though they would be there, they would be dark. And when the Spirit of God flows through us and speaks through us, and we go deeper into the Spirit, we become quickened. The mind is quickened, and all of a sudden our spiritual eyes are opened, and all of a sudden we see Jesus as our healer. We just don't confess he's our healer. We see Jesus as our provider. We're not just confessing he's our provider. We see Jesus as our protector. We're not just confessing he's our protector. You see it. The, 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 the eyes of your understanding are enlightened by the spirit. So he says according as he has chosen us. He's chosen us in him. When? Before the foundation of the world. Man, can you imagine God saw you before the foundation word? He saw that you would respond to the gospel. He saw that you would seek his face. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world and rich in faith and heirs to the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him? Who are the saints? Those who have chosen to make it their life purpose to love God. I, I want you to really hear this because a lot of times, you know, sometimes we just, what Christianity is, it's kind of foggy. It's kind of like murky. It's kind of like, well, you pray a prayer, you, you confess something, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you what Christianity is. Christ, a Christian is a person who in their heart of hearts has made it their purpose in life to love God back. Do we struggle with that? Yeah, because the enemy comes to strip that out of us. The love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. That means there was a group of people who did love God. The Greek word there is agape. But the devil somehow got in there and stripped them of that love. Hey, I've known people who loved God. Now, to love God doesn't mean you just say, well, I love God. No, uh, uh, this is love that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Uh, Jesus said, uh, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and, I, and, and manifest myself to him. So remember the first commandment. Think about this. What is the very first commandment? God never changed his mind. It's throughout the old and the new. Thou shall love the Lord thy God. Who's the thou? That's me. That's me. I don't, whether or not you do it is between you and God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. How much? With all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy, thy, thy strength, with all thy mind and all thy being. And then you can love your neighbor as yourself. See, we can't love, we can't love our neighbor without first loving Christ. But if we love Christ, we'll love our neighbor. Because if a man says he loves God but, does not, but hates his brother, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. I mean, this is really deeper waters than what you realize. You, you've got to, it, it, it's going to take faith to love God. And it, should, it shouldn't take a lot of faith because look what he's done for us. God loved us before we, before we, when we were still sinners. I mean, he loved us so much. He, God so loved us so much he gave his only begotten son who, 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 who was the word and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
But Christianity is loving God. That is, and every day of my life, I got to remind myself, I got to press towards that. I want to love God. I want to love God. I, he deserves it. He's worthy of it. He, he, he bought me with his blood. I, I, God, I got to love you. And in, in that loving God, I will love his truth. If I love God, I'll love his truth. Now, don't misunderstand me. The devil's going to try to rob this from me. He hates the image of God. He hates, he hates it when you reflect the image of God, the likeness of God, the character of God, the nature of God. And, and really, you, you, you've got to have these realities literally pounded in you. Over and over and over and over and over. And that's why the Bible even said that the last days will be perilous days. And it says gather even so much to more as you see the day approaching. Why? Because the devil wants to rob that love in my heart. See, it's people who talk this talk. Well, uh, when am I going to get what I deserve? You better thank God you don't get what you deserve. See, it's, it's not whether or not God blesses me, though I've already been blessed. It's not whether God heals me, I've already been healed. It's not whether God will ever, you know, he said, I'll never leave you, forsake you. How do you do that, Pastor? You do it by faith. See, I'm not trying to earn the blessings of God. I'm just trying to realize I have them. <laughs> you you got to hear this. I'm not trying to get healed. I just need to realize I am healed. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get a hold that God is with me. I just got to realize he is with me. And he said, he never leave me nor forsake me. That God is not a man that he can't lie. So he, he says, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. What? That I should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Listen, to the praise of the glory of his grace. It says, it says if any man, in, in, in Ephesians 2, it, it says, for by the, he, he says, if any man tries to brace about his good works, he's deceived, because the good works that are in me is because of the grace of God in me. For in other words, all that I accomplish for the Lord, that really is for the Lord, it was God's grace at work in me that and I cooperated with it I cooperated with God's grace I said yes to the grace of God say yes to the grace of God I said yes to his ability I wasn't fighting him I wasn't resisting him I, I wasn't denying him I wasn't saying well I really want to go to heaven but you know what I, I still want to lie I still want to cheat I still want to commit adultery I, I still want to watch filth I still want to have bad attitudes no 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 man they're totally completely opposite light and darkness every day I've got to set my heart to seek the Lord every day do you mess up through the day? Yeah, what do you do? I confess my sins. I repent. I said, Lord, I wasn't in agreement with my attitude just a little bit with you. That isn't how Jesus, my kids love to tell me, Dad, is that how Jesus would act? <laughs> my flesh wants to rise up and say, look in the mirror. <laughs> but you know what? I've got to be, I got to be honest. Oh, you're right. You know, I keep repeating myself. Great peace have them that love the law and nothing shall offend them. Nothing, I say that over and over, nothing, nothing, nothing. So if I'm still being offended, it means I have a problem with loving the truth. I don't love the truth yet the way I should. Now I'm in a progress of spiritual growth. I'm not talking about hitting perfection before you can get to heaven. I'm saying when you die, your heart's got to be set towards heaven. Like the man, the thief on the cross, when he said, Lord, he said, we deserve what we're getting. Remember me when you come into the kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Grab that. <laughs> today you will be, okay? To the praise of his glory, wherein he hath made us accepted in the blood, in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence listen having made known unto us the mystery of his will what is the mystery of his will what we've been talking about this this john 17 father that they may be one with us even as we are one that the world may believe that thou hast sent me this oneness with god that's the mystery and in and, and Ephesians chapter 2 and 3, he talks about how the Gentiles have been made one with the Jews in this oneness with God. This oneness with God. See, the devil, he didn't want to be one with God. Hey, there ain't no problem with angels being one with God. He wanted to be God. He didn't want to be in harmony with God. He wanted to dominate. 
he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And he convinced a third of the angelic host. And then he deceived the woman. And he's been deceiving ever since. So look there before we close. Go there to 1 John chapter 3. Talking about this, this, this revelation, this mystery of the kingdom, this, this, this God uh, in us. You know, the hope of glory, Christ in us, the hope of glory, the, 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 this divine call, uh, this divine mission, this divine purpose. Have you ever really run into somebody that, that, that had a mission? They had a purpose. I mean, they really had a goal, whether it be God or, or man. Uh, if they really had their heart set on something that they wanted to do, I mean, they really got it in their head, they had to do this thing, you're not going to stop them no matter what. They don't care what price they've got to pay. They don't care what hell they've got to go through. They don't care what happens. They're going to pay that price. Well, listen, God wants us to have this divine purpose to be one with him. And we're not letting no devil stop us. We're not letting people's opinions stop us. We're not letting circumstances stop us. We're not, you know, that's one reason why, and I'm bragging on Jesus, sickness and disease has to stop me. It's hit me, but I said, no, no, I've got a purpose. I've got to preach the gospel. I've got to declare the word. I've got to get the, I've got to get the truth out there. I mean, that, 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 that Jesus said that, don't you know, I must be about my father's business. He said, I came down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. And the will of him that sent me is that all that would see the son and believe on him might be saved. And I might raise him up at the last day. And that's the purpose. You know, the, 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 J Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. You know what our heavenly vision is? It, it's to be like Jesus and, and to introduce people to him. Now, I understand this generation. I've watched it through the years. A lot of people don't want to know Jesus. They really don't want to know him. But the reality of the fact is that it could be because they haven't seen Jesus in us the way they should. Uh, so we could blame the sinner and say, well, they just don't want to get saved. No, uh, they want to, if they see Jesus in us, it'll have a tremendous persuasion on whether or not they accept or reject him. Now, if they want to reject the real Jesus, that's up to them. But you know, there's another Jesus being preached in the pulpits today. That's what Paul said. If I, or I, an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So there's, there's another Jesus being preached in the pulpit. Uh, not a Jesus that, that, that will transform and change and, or, and make you radical like him. You know, Jesus was a radical. Why do you think they killed him? He, he wasn't lukewarm. Now, uh, he was in his quiet years until the father told him, Okay, it's time. Go get water baptized by John. I'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. Go spend 40 days in wilderness. But then he came out in the power of the Spirit. And for the next three and a half years, I mean, he was a, a holy hurricane. He was a holy twister. He was a holy, he was thunder and lightning wherever he went. Everywhere. I mean, things happened wherever he went. And the thing is, Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than he shall you do because they're going to my Father in heaven. How, how does that happen, Father? Uh, uh, how does that happen, Father God? You become like Peter in the boat. And you see Jesus walking on the water and you don't even think about the water. You don't even think about the storm. You don't even think about the circumstances. You lose sight of everything. Listen to me. This is the key to moving into such dynamic uh, places with God that you lose sight of everything but Jesus. And you don't even think. You just do it. Uh, that's how, when I first got born again, that's, that's what happened to me. I came up off of that barracks floor, and I'm so full of the reality of Christ. He just saved my wretched soul that I just, grabbed, I thought, okay, how can I get to know him? I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to, and that was the scream and the cry of my heart at that moment. I want to know, I want to know the one who just delivered me, saved me, removed the depression, and ripped out of me the alcoholism and the pornography and, and, and the tobacco and, 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 and the drugs. I mean, ripped it out of me, even the cuss words. I want to know him. And I grabbed my little military green Bible and I started devouring it. And I just wanted to see Jesus. <laughs> And without even realizing it, Jesus began to live in and through me. Well, Pastor Mike, do you live like that all the time? No, no because things happen. And, and the devil, he's trying to strip me from that reality. He's trying to strip me from that reality. 
And, and the shame is every one of us people in the pulpit ought to be taking people into that reality, into that revelation, into that knowledge, into that understanding. First John chapter 3, behold, John. Now I was listening to the gospel of John today and remember, and, and, and John never referred to himself in the gospel of John. And he would say, and uh, the, the disciple said, see, that's why we know, like, remember the disciple that got Peter in to the place where Jesus was being, was being, uh, 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 being beat? It was John that did that. He was the disciple. Just read the Gospel of John. He never said, I, John. He always said, the disciple, the disciple, the disciple. It was John. John knew somebody in, 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 who knew the high priest that year and, and got Jesus in it. And I think that's why uh, Peter was surprised to see John there as Jesus was being, going through that mockery of a trial. And I believe that's when Jesus appeared to uh, them uh, after the resurrection and he's making fish. And, and he says to Peter, do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And then I, I think Peter at that time, they didn't have a revelation. It was Judas who had betrayed Jesus and, and John said, what about that guy? What about that disciple? He was talking about John. Because <laughs> he, he, and Jesus said, that's none of your business. Say, that's none of your business. See, this is where the enemy gets us. He gets us to be looking at one another and then trying to change each other. Listen, when, when you can change yourself to where you are perfect and you have arrived, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and work on me. <laughs> but until that time, you, work on, you let God work on you. Say, Amen. Grab that. <laughs> Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. We should be called the sons of God. Wow. Then it says this, Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it didn't know him. Listen, don't be upset when Christians don't understand you. If you are walking in harmony with God, they're not going to understand you. People don't know, don't make you, they don't understand what makes you tick. I, I, through the years, people have tried to figure out Mike Yeager. They can't figure me out. They try, they think they got me all figured out, but they can't because they don't understand what makes me tick. And I'm not talking about weaknesses and shortcomings. Now I'm talking about what makes me tick. You know what? You take away you take away my relationship with Jesus, I, I don't want to live. You take away, uh, you can take away the building, you can take away my position, you can take away everything I've done in the natural, I'll be okay. As long as I've got Jesus. We sang about that tonight, as long as I've got Jesus. It don't matter to me. I mean, it don't matter if I leave my head. Listen, people, people, people understand the kind of living environments that I've lived in through the years for Christ and including my family. I'm telling you, I have such an amazing wife. And I, I married a woman that really, really set her heart on loving Jesus. Because if, if she hadn't done it, I put her in such places, she would have lost her mind. I mean, we, we fly to Germany and Mike was three months old. We land in Germany with nowhere to go. I just said, come on, baby, we're going to Germany. What are we going to do? We're going to preach the gospel. I land in Germany uh, back in 1981. We're there. And now we're standing there and we have nowhere to stay. We don't hardly have any money. And, and I'm standing there. I said, okay, Lord, I'm here. And they came to me, go over to the American uh, uh, with the military uh, in Frankfurt Airport. I went over there and there was a Hispanic man standing there. I could go on a night long what happened there for nine months. And we went over there and I said, hi, I'm Mike Yeager. And he says, well, what are you doing in Germany? You know, he was at a, 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 like a, a sergeant in the army and he was a Hispanic man. I said, well, I came to preach the gospel. He said, that's amazing. He said, uh, I oversee a number of uh, 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 military chapels and God opened the door. Well, we didn't have nowhere to live. And next thing you know, Kathy and I, we're staying with this young couple and it was such a small apartment. And it was like one bathroom and in the kitchen and the front room together and they had a newborn and me and Kathy had to sleep in their big old cast iron bathtub with Michael all crunched up sleeping in a bathtub all crunched up not comfortable and then the poor people they'd try to sneak in at night and have to use the bathroom and we'd hear them and we stayed there until we got a little apartment right below them and it was so full of mold. I mean, when I opened up the door, they had a little bathroom and it was a one bedroom apartment and the walls were pure black mold. Listen to this. And you said the, to the toilet was covered in black mold. 
And the mattress was so wet, it felt like you were sleeping on a sponge. And it's in the middle of winter. And, and all I put that woman through, not once did she ever complain. Not once. Why? She had her eyes on Jesus. She had lost her mind otherwise. <laughs> Get your eyes on Jesus. Peter gets his eyes on Jesus. He jumps out of the boat. He's walking on the water. When did he sink? When he got his eyes on the circumstances. Are you getting something here tonight? He got his eyes on the circumstances. But it says, listen to what it says here. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. We are now the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, say we know. We know, we know, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. How can you say that, John? John, the beloved who laid his head upon the uh, chest of Jesus. How, how can you say that, John? Listen, for we shall see him as he is. Do you understand this is the key of your transformation? Do you understand that's why you've been given the Bible? To see him as he is. Not as preachers tell you. Not as feelings tell you. Not as opinions tell you. Not as circumstances tell you. How do I know God? By who he says he is. That's how I know him. That's my confidence. I read it. I believe it. Let God be true and everything else a lie. I read it. It says, I'm healed. He meets my needs. I can do all things. And not only that, but then I want to be a doer of the word and not a hearer, only deceiving yourself. For if any be hear the word and not a doer, he is like a man who beholdeth his natural face in the glass. There it is. You're seeing him in the glass. You're looking in here and you're seeing Jesus. But he goes his way and he straight away forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso continueth in this word, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. You want to be blessed? Find your identity here in Jesus. Find your identity. I told you last week, Stephen and I have been discussing, and Stephen began to say, I'm a nobody, I'm a nobody. I said, welcome to the party. We're the party of, well, I'd never say I'm a nobody. No, no, he's everything. Hey, I am a nobody. It's in that reality that I'm a nobody, and he's everything that I'm able to do what he does. Because it's not me doing it, it's him doing it through me. And Jesus said, I don't do anything of myself. He said, all that I do is the Father that does it through me. What a life. <laughs> what amazing life. And, and, and because of this reality, God begins to do things. So let's close up here. But we know... That when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. Now, verse 3, and every man that hath this hope in him, listen, every man that has this hope in him, purify himself even as he is pure. So I'll share a story you've already heard, but it's an incredible story. So here I am. Uh, I'm still in Alaska, and the Lord's moving me down to Pennsylvania, and I'm with this preacher and his wife, Bob and Helen Rhodes. And I'm 20... Got saved at 19. Now I'm 21 years old. We stop, and I'm just caught up in Jesus, guys. Now, there was times I was, you know, going through some tests and trials. I'd backslide a little bit and come back stronger. And so, in this episode, I am strong. I'm just, Jesus, all my mind is on Jesus. You're wonderful. You're holy. You're awesome. You saved me. You redeemed me. You delivered me. And, and I know I'm called to preach, but I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about who I am, or I'm thinking about Jesus. So we go into this little, we stop on a Sunday, we go into this little old-fashioned church to stop going up towards Fairbanks, Alaska from Anchorage. And I go in there, and we, I'm the first one in the door, and open the door up, here's a little old lady. She's sitting on the other side of the church in wooden pews. She turns and looks at me, and I knew by the Holy Ghost she had devils. And the Lord said to me, cast those devils out of them. Now, I'm not trying to hear the voice of God. He just cast the devils out of her. She gets up and she runs out of the building. Boom. I said, okay, well, Lord, I understand authority. I'm not the authority of this church. I'm just a visitor. And so, Lord, I'm going to submit to authority. So it was just a very brief church service. And I went up to this man afterwards and I said, Pastor, hi. You know, I'm just a kid. 
And uh, I said, I saw this little old lady sitting there and she ran out when I came in. Who was he? Oh, well, she's not a member of my church. He was trying to distance himself from her. She is crazy. This woman is a lunatic and I don't really want nothing to do with her. She comes here once in a while. I said, well, do you mind if I go down and pray for her? You go do what you want. It's none of my business. She's not one of my members. Well, tell, give, me, give me directions. So, and so she didn't live very far from the church. She just lived down an old trail dirt road and, 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 a, and a rundown house. And so I, uh, we got into uh, Bob and Helen's old Corona Toyota, which was rusting out and drove down there and pulled up. And when we got to it, it looked like Sanford, Son, Sanford and Son. You ever see that? But even way more junk everywhere old wash machines tvs well i get to go out of the car and this old man comes out skinny old man now this lady is probably in her late 60s and uh that ran out of the church and he starts yelling oh you're men of god you're men of god i'm not lying to you liars go to hell you're men of god you've come to help my wife well i, I the only thing i could say is you're you're right i said uh we're here to help your wife i said where is she well she's down in the summer kitchen it was about August time. And so I went down this, this old goat trail past all this old junk. And it was a screen door. And I opened up and there was like a black summer kitchen. And uh, I looked over and uh, there was a, a, a utility sink. And she was over there, her back to me. And I am not lying to you now. This is the honest truth. She's peeling carrots with the biggest knife I ever saw. Peeling carrots. Listen to me. Her head on her body. And if you've never dealt with real demonic powers, a lot of the stuff they talk about in America is nothing compared to real demonic powers. A lot of people are not demon possessed. They are oppressed, obsessed, and depressed. And, and a lot of people aren't possessed. And it's in my book, uh, uh, The Expert's Handbook of Exorcism. And people go on and on. I never exalt devils and demons. I've dealt with it. And the very, when I first got saved, I cast the devil out of a man who was a devil worshiper who ate his fingers for power and cast the devils out. He got born again and filled the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues in less than five minutes. And I had two men there saw it happen. And uh, TJ. But anyway, so her head swivels on her body. Her eyes are glowing bright red. I go, whoa, fear hits me, man, like a wave. I'm rubbing my eyes. I'm thinking there ain't no way. But I step back into the spirit. Now I'm back in because my eyes are on Jesus. Next thing I know, she swings around without me even. I, I began to talk to her about the things of God. Next thing, she runs at me, honest to God, the truth, with that knife still in her hand. She jumps on me supernaturally. Now, Bob is behind me. He's a big guy, about six foot husky big guy. He's behind me. He's seeing everything happen. She jumps on me. Next thing you know, she's hitting me in the face as hard as she can. I feel her hitting me, but it's not hurting. And I say, in the name of Jesus, and the power of God rips her off of my body. She flies through the air, which is maybe about 10 feet across that room. And she hits the block wall. And she just goes to the floor. Now, she didn't receive any physical harm. I go over there and I cast the devils out of her in a matter of minutes. Not hours. In the name of Jesus. And then I led her to God. And I led her to the Holy Ghost. And I led her husband into the same. And then she told me her story. I said, tell us what happened, sister. When I was a little girl, my uncle was sexually molesting me every day, every day, every day. And then when he died, he kept coming back. And he's been molesting me for all these 50-some years, 60 years. Well, it wasn't her uncle. It was what we call a familiar spirit. So we, we, we took her to a, a concert. They were the Davis family. I don't, I don't think they're even around anymore. They were down the road, and we got her involved in the church before I left. So we left, and we're down lower 48s now, and I'm with Bob and his wife. And one day I'm up, and I'm preaching, and I shared this story. And I, I said, and she dropped the knife. And he came to me afterwards. He said, Pastor Mike, you're not telling that story right. And, and, and I said, oh, God, forbid if I'm lying or I'm exaggerating. I said, Pastor Mike. I was there. I saw it. I said, what? Pastor, she never dropped the knife. I said, what? Pastor, she still had the knife in her hand. I said, what? Pastor, I saw her stabbing you in the face with the knife. He said, I thought you were a dead man. She was, he was, she was stabbing you, uh, Brother Mike. But the knife couldn't penetrate my skin. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout.
I've got other stories like that too, but that's one of the incredible ones. Well, how could that be, Pastor Mike? My eyes were on Jesus. I, 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 at that time, I didn't know thousands of scriptures like I know now. I didn't memorize whole books of the Bible. But I was so in love with Jesus. So in love with Jesus that Jesus himself was in me. How many of you know the devil can't kill Jesus? Amen. Amen. We'll give the Lord another hand clap and a shout.